Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent artists seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower artists. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi everyone, this is Chatting with Nat. This is Natalie Jeans and Natalie Jean. And today we have the honor of having electric violinist and dancer Asher Lobb. At 13, Asher Lobb debuted as a classical violinist with the Buffalo Philharmonic. Wow. Today, he is a dynamic electric violinist and dancer whose multicultural repertoire has won acclaim on four continents. Asher has been featured on PBS and made headlines on CNN, NBC, and the New York Post. Despite a a significant health challenge in 2014, Asher reinvented himself as advancing violinist. No, that says as dancing. You know, I can't read today. Dancing violinist, blending hip hop, EDM, rock, and acrobatic choreography. His latest original single, Subtle Pulse, has been critically acclaimed He aims to influence societal norms and conventional thinking about musical performance. I love that because that's what I'm trying to do, too. So let's give him a round of applause. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can't I can't clap for you with just my little hands. What a warm round of applause. That's that's a big audience. That yeah, right. Yeah, for you, I, it has to be for everybody that comes on here. You guys are special. My little, my little hands can't do you justice. Wow, you made my job easy there. I didn't have to do anything. I got a round of a standing yeah. ovation there. That's right. How are you, you, Natalie? I'm okay. Um, I'm tired, <laughs> but I'm okay. You know, <laughs> these these past three four years. Four years have been like cray, cray, very cray, cray. I like to call it. How have you been? Hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to <laughs> agree with the tired part. <laughs> I'm working <laughs> my tail off. Um, as an independent musician, it's just nonstop. But uh, I love what I do, and I'm feeling good despite the fatigue. Um, and I'm feeling fulfilled. So I guess in a nutshell, that's. That's how I'm feeling. I love that. I love that. Now, the question that I like to ask everybody is this. Oh, it's just been crazy out there. I mean, really, how have you been? You got to think of all the crap that we've been through, you know, the George Floyd, Mm -hmm. the the elections, the overturning of Mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade, cicadas came to play, polio tried to make a comeback, measles tried to make a comeback, COVID had some babies, pandemic. Um, tsunamis, earthquakes, assassinations, what am I, mass shootings. Hmm. There's always something like that going on in this world. Police brutality. Oh, yeah. You name it. It's just, how does one cope? <clears throat> how have you yeah, coped you think there was... watching this, <laughs> watching this well, play out? Well, <laughs> yeah, um, we we both agreed not to trash talk, but um, <laughs> since you <laughs> – since you bring up the top, all these topics, I mean, that's like a mouthful right there. Um, yeah. I'm going to try to keep it cool, but okay. uh, since you brought up, since you brought up, you bring up an important point. How do, how do we cope with all the insanity in the world? Um, and it kind of makes you feel like, okay, is there anything good going on here? Because oh, right. I'm tired. I'm work, working my tail off, and there's murder every day <laughs> and it just seems yeah. like mayhem and the economy's crashing and there's inflation galore nonstop and nobody's happy on Twitter. If you see all the public posts, all yeah. the, uh, all the trolls leaving comments under any public leader, you name it, right or left or middle right. or center. Um, so what's going on? So I, my response to that is I think it's kind of complicated. Um, I'm going to start with, I take the news, with a grain of salt. I think that, you know, they have what to sell 
And I think that there's a hell of a lot going on that's good in this world that supersedes that that if we were given that kind of news by mainstream left or right or middle media, we would be Mm -hmm. having kind of a different perspective and we'd feel a little less fatigued in life. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I guess I want to just sort of mention as a side point that when I'm driving home from a late gig and I need to entertain my brain (laughs) so I don't fall asleep Mm -hmm. at the wheel. uh, I, 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 lately I've just been tending to not (laughs) turn on the news because I just Mm -hmm. don't want to hear I don't want to hear the negativity, the nonstop negativity, um, and this side hates that side. And I, I want to focus more on the what I'm doing really for a living, which is music, which is really kind right. of combating negativity in any mm. way, possible way that I can through the universal language of notes and music. Right. Uh, so that's how I deal with it. That's how I cope with it. I love that. I love that. You know- you and I are the same. Well, I write social impact message songs, so I'm actually talking about the crap that's going on in the world. And and it's more about some some people like to wear blinders on, and what I try to do is make them see certain things. It's not about trying, trying to change somebody's opinion, but to open their eyes to see what the world really is like and what people go through. And maybe sometimes need people need to sit down and place themselves in other people's shoes before they judge other people. I think that's that's very important. Um, I try not to look at well, the news, but I can't help it. They're in my face, especially in certain things. I need to be aware of what's going on um, out there. So, Maybe. so uh, hats off to you for addressing, you know, the, the social impact through music. That's uh, that's incredible, and mm-hmm. I have a tremendous amount of respect for artists that do that. And uh, you know, I, I have diff- various messages mm. uh, through my music as well. Right. Uh, I haven't focused so much on politics or social impact, that kind of thing, um, or at least social impact via politics. But right. I, I just want to clarify what I was saying, that I 100% think it's important to stay up to date and stay right. in tune with the news and current right. events. Um, but, I, but I try to focus on, in light of all those, those, the current events and the divisions, mm-hmm. I try to focus on what u- unifies us. Yes. Um, so that the people, my fans, who are who may not get along necessarily if you talk politics, they do get along with the, when it comes to the genre of music that I'm playing right. and the messages, the right. universal messages behind it. So that's what I try to focus on. I, lo- I love that. I love that. Now, obviously, um, during the pandemic, there was a lot of loss. Um, people lost limbs. They lost lives, family members. Uh, some people have long-term COVID, like I do, because I had COVID three times. Oh, yeah. um, and I was yeah. whacked back, boosted, you name it. Everything was done to me. Um, but mm. there was there there, were, <laughs> there was actually pros during this time. Obviously, um, what I'm trying to get at is that we, we were allowed to have a lot of self-introspection. So for me, you know, I saw a lot of family members walking together because they had the time. We were locked down for a year, you know. It shouldn't be weird, but people t- took the time to get to know one another again. Um, I have people that, you know, decided to cut back on hours at work because they realized they weren't spending enough time with their family. Um, climate change, my God. Well, that, we were, that was a good we were, thing. Right? When we weren't in the street, pollution level went down. Animals and Mother oh, yeah. Nature were like, oh, we're not – Hopefully they don't come back, but we had to come back. And there were a lot Mm of articles about people quitting their jobs because what the pandemic did Mm -hmm. reinforced the Mm -hmm. idea that life is really short. And so people are like, Mm -hmm. you know what? I need to make a living, but I need to be happy doing what I'm doing. I know I need clothes on my back, food to eat, shelter, and all Mm -hmm. that good stuff. I walk into the door, I need to be happy. So a lot of people started doing something more in line with their passion. And then you have artists like you and I, some people, you know, created singles, EPs, albums, some people rebranded, some people decided to, oh, music's not for them anymore. So during this time, did you take take time to self-reflect? Did you decide, oh, I'm going to stay the same, I know who I am as an artist, or did you change anything? Yeah, I think self-reflection during like a tumultuous time such as the pandemic is inevitable for just about anybody who's somewhat right. self-aware. Uh, I 100. Uh, percent it was it was it was really it was traumatic for me. Um, you know, right. I had a newborn. 
um, mm. at, at that point it was November 2019. So you can imagine how, how insane of like an experience the whole thing was. Right. Uh, I I did consider leaving, especially because I have three degrees in the sciences, and you know mm. it's not it wouldn't take much of a leap for me to make this the shift, but right. I yeah I, I've been pursuing my passion music uh, since 2001 professionally in, in, in the tri-state and across the country. Okay. Uh, so I, I just thought, you know what, I, I just, I need to take on this challenge uh, and I'm not going to give up. And this whole thing just seems so absurd. I can't, can't be possible that, you know, the government, that everybody's just going to shut down the entire music industry and lo and right. behold, they pretty much managed to do that in certain regions. But I, I held on, <laughs> held on for dear life yeah. on, uh, within music. I didn't stop. That's awesome. Yeah. This is good. I mean, because a lot of oh, other well, people, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't blame them one bit. Um, and, you know, I, I hope there isn't another one. <laughs> but, yeah, wait, wait, it's financially, it's just, look, if, if I was in right. an apartment, I may have been a little bit, it, it, it might have been a little bit more of a precarious situation, but it was sort of like my, right. myself and my wife kind of fighting to hold on. And then, you know, we had, we were able to kind of at least freeze the mortgage while, while our incomes were dropping. Um, So I I was in a little bit of a different situation, but nonetheless, extremely challenging and and made me question, okay, is is this really practical for me to continue? And I guess here I am. uh, I haven't really taken a break. And actually I, I doubled down on my efforts. That's awesome. I think that's fantastic. Good good for you. Now, how did you get into the music industry? Did you come out of the womb and you were like, I'm Asher, I'm going to do music? Or was it something that you heard or you saw that made you say, okay, music is for me? Well, I just about came out of the womb. Um, <laughs> my mother gave birth on stage in front of a few hundred people. No, I, I was, uh, I started violin at, uh, two, two and change on, on a margarine box with the oh, wow. rubber band serving as strings, uh, learning the Suzuki method. And then I gravitated, I, I, um, that kind of shifted to a tiny wood violin by age three and went up the, the Suzuki levels, the books until I was, I don't even remember what number. And, uh, so I was pretty much born in classical music and then I shifted and then I actually moved uh, professionally. Once I moved to New York, uh, post college, uh, post high school, uh, I, you know, pursued my degree responsibly, mm-hmm. quote unquote, while paying the bills, uh, through university, uh, you know, by gigging on weekends. Right. So that's when the professional thing started. Although I, I, I had, had, um, pretty much done quite a few concerts, um, I, man, I started doing concerts when I was a kid, when I was like four or five years old. It's just Suzuki, Suzuki concerts, uh, Greater Buffalo Youth Orchestra concerts, um, uh, competitions through NISMA, upstate New York competitions. It was nonstop. Wow. Very interesting. Now, when did you incorporate dancing into your thing? Into uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, that that was definitely not this intuitive development it was <laughs> that that came after i lost the ability to the physical ability to maintain that professional you know i had to take a hiatus i was in a wheelchair right. adrenal insufficiency it was a mess um i regained the strength uh uh which is kind of a, was a bit of a shocker to my the, the physicians um wow. and and once i did i i really like i i i hit the ground running and yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I found some inspiration around the other, other types of musicians that were finding success in terms of connecting with their fans through dancing. And I just, cause I do a lot of high energy violin music, electronic right. dance, that type of stuff. It made total sense for me to just do some choreography. I started working with dancers, right. um, in the studio and it was just fun. I just loved it. And so I, I, I do it for larger shows. I don't okay. do it for everything, but I, you know, it's definitely uh, something I, I hold kind of near and dear to what what it is that, that I uniquely bring to the table as a musician. So, it's one of the fun facets awesome. of performance for me. Obviously, if you can believe, you can achieve, and you got out of the wheelchair. So, that's awesome. Kudos to you. 
Yeah, still, um, you know, grateful every day that I'm just able to do what I can do professionally now, and have the, have the strength to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how important is authenticity for you as a person and as an artist? Uh, well, it, it's kind of like mu- musician, m- musician 101. Uh, as far from what I've learned, at least, uh, musician marketing, whatever it is, just being true to yourself, because because people can kind of see through a lack of authenticity. They can see th- right. through being fake. And and in this day and age, where pretty much your life is public on social yeah. media, you're forced to have every every bit of your uh, your your private life uh, publicized. Uh, at least for many people, it, it, they'll. You know, pe- people, you got to be yourself, and and it's you can't just you can't keep it up day, on a daily basis and and produce content and have people not think, okay, this guy's full of BS. He's not really who he is. Yeah, no, that's well, just my I, perspective. I no, that's that's a true perspective. Um, so uh, during the pandemic, obviously, I mean, I was working from home, but I had some downtime to be able to take a bunch of webinars and conferences. So I did TikTok University, called TikTok Cap University, and they were saying how the authentic uh, videos are the ones that do um, the best. Uh, and that, you know, people are on TikTok uh, more, on, on TikTok more than they are, you know, watching Netflix and stuff like that, which is crazy. But I guess if, if you're only watching three mm-hmm. minutes, I mean, yeah, I'm, the viewership has got to be strong. Um, now they've added, I just noticed, 10 minutes. You can actually speak for 10 minutes on there, which is crazy. Um, yeah, and seven reels. I think that during the pandemic, a lot of people, you know, they took time to watch the TikToks. They needed hope. They needed to laugh. They needed to be silly. They needed to be goofy. And I think it works for independent artists and real people rather than the mainstream artists because people – think they they can do the things that real people can do when they look at mainstream artists they're like oh okay whatever okay they're doing their thing and i can't achieve to that and so you know some some people may say no you know well asher brings me joy i'm going to keep watching him maybe i can be a violinist maybe i can be a dancer so i always tell you know artists that you know that's our superpower you know, people look at us and say, you know, maybe I can achieve this. Oh, if this person's doing this, I can do it too. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that authenticity well, is, thing is real. Yeah. Yeah, and and I mean, you could be inauthentic and just sort of drive yourself into the ground. Right. Once you realize that, like, it's really hard to be for me to pretend to be person X Y Z when I'm not. Right. And after having posted a few thousand of these videos, I really I can't take it anymore. So, yeah, you don't, <laughs> most people don't have a choice but to be true to themselves. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I, I find TikTok very interesting, though, because I'll post up something about my music. And I'll get, you know, a couple hundred views. And then I'll post something about politics. I, 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 I am like, what, what's going on? I get 54,000 views on one thing that I thought. I mean, this was when Roe versus Wade thing happened. And I'm just like, yeah. okay, well, this, is, this is my niche. And I talk about everything, but I'm very real. You know, people, oh, Natalie, you're judgy. Yes, I'm judging right now. I didn't say I wasn't. You know, I like to uh, yeah, be real. I, well, I, I respect that. And I, I thought frequently about, okay, maybe posting something that, that's, you know, politically right. leaning, uh, something politically. I, I, uh, I guess, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not as good at, uh, getting other people. I don't, I don't feel as comfortable getting other people's skin as many, many of the, whatever, the leading Twitter and, right. you know, uh, just to say Twitter leaders, uh, they actually enjoy it. I guess it's just attention. Uh, I I don't know. I try. I just. I guess maybe I'm a bit of a weakling in that regard. I just try to unify yeah. people. I. It's not. It's, it's not, just. It's, it's just not, my personality. It's not about. It's not even being a weakling. And when I talk on there, it's not that I'm, you know, not trying to, you know, not unify people because there's some people that agree with what I say. Some people don't. And I always tell people, people have the right to their own opinions. Like if people are weird to me, they're strange. Like you post an opinion, they're like, now, now, that's that. And then they'll post another opinion and you want, they want you to agree with, with their crap. And it's just like, dude, you have the right to your opinion, but so do I. 
And so when I bring stuff yeah. out, my TikTok, you know, I just basically look at something and I will tell them this is just an opinion of what I see going on here. Like I like for example, I I talked about that that guy that um, um that comic strip guy that did the Dilbert and he's he's yeah. on he's whining and complaining on Twitter every single day. He did this to himself, point blank. And so I've done I've done um TikToks on um cancel culture. And I try to explain to people, I don't think certain people should be canceled forever. But the reason that there is cancel culture is because we've let people get away with too much for the longest time. We've enabled people for so long. So if people don't like cancel culture, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's because you never did uh, anything before. I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. But I well, do it's important that- what you're doing. Go ahead. It's important what you're doing. It's important to open up dialogue uh, on both yeah. sides, and that's something that social media has, has permitted. And I think, and I think it's benefited our country within within the realm of people who want to kind of consider the other side. Uh, that being right. said, it's sort of facilitated um, division. Social media has facilitated di- yeah. division, uh, and that it's like fed the same. Uh, you know, uh, material to people who are already on the left and the same material that people are on the right, and it's sort of strengthening their their views, um, which is not something that I I am happy about. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, I, I'd like like if if like um, I feel like I feel like social media tries to constantly determine what what my political views are. It puts me in this right. box, puts me in this category, and then feeds me nonstop, like this certain, I don't know, Ben Shapiro, for instance, uh, mm. who's, who's a guy on the, on the right, or, or um, uh, what do you call it, who's, who's somebody on the left, I'm just like, my brain's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, somebody from NPR, or whatever it is, right, and, right. and whatever like mode I'm in, and really just, I'm, genu- I'm genuinely interested in absorbing and in consuming content from both sides, so that right. I could try to, get, to you know, to Get, get get a holistic picture and all sorts of right. things piss me off about Biden and and Trump and like get out, right. everybody piss you know uh, but but I want to know I want to know I want to get it sort of unfiltered like I want to make my own for my own opinions instead of aligning with a right. a party or with a group um so anyway I, I'm I'm digressing my I, my original point was I res- <laughs> I have a tremendous amount of respect for what you're doing that's what that's what was my original point um. And, and it's important what you do, and it's important to strike controversy and to have people have this conversation. And I kind of yeah. wish I was I had the balls to do it. You do. <laughs> it's just I'm not there. I, I aim to please, and it's just, yeah. <laughs> You've got them. Now, I am going to play your song. Let's see. I'm, Neon Dreams. Tell me what that's about. Uh, quite literally, literally the dream that I – embarked upon at that that point in my life when I regained the strength uh, to lift the instrument and I I had another chance to yeah to pursue my passion music awesome let me play it
Thank you. Wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Um, do you do you try to get? Thank do you, you do sync and licensing? Do you try to get your music into sync and licensing? Um, I I would love to have like a, a you know like a strong manager who helps me do that type of stuff because I I've sort of pursued it and then a million the millions of hats that I have to wear as an independent artist they just I guess oh, I, could, I just I oh, get attacked I and there's just yeah but that's that's oh, what I that's that's something I'd really love to do um you should. it's been quite a challenge thank you you should I so maybe it, mm. uh-huh. um, well, I think that is a pretty the, big compliment reason, no you don't uh, yeah your music would be good. For obviously for single and licensing. The reason that I ask is because um, your music is awesome. <laughs> and mm, uh, I, nice have a, I have a music publishing manager. In fact, I need to send somebody else's music. I'd like, I'd love to be able to send my music, your music to her. Because um, she's always looking for people to um, do the sync and licensing would- thing. Well, thank you so much. I 100% would would be really grateful. I mean, that would be... I mean, it's, it's always, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why your music's not in film until somebody should have heard it somewhere. Because, um, you know, right now, that's where the money oh. is. That's huge money in thinking licensing. And you obviously have a lot of instrumentals. And that, I mean that, yeah. You, I understand the whole thing about being an indie because I do everything myself, every every last thing, every last thing. Even with the thinking licensing, I'm always thinking for different opportunities. That's just, I, you know, we basically need another 24 hours um, to be able to do stuff. And you have a kid. I don't have children, um, so um, I understand you completely. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's draining. It's. <laughs> I mean, I go to sleep at 1 a.m. just about every night. I just, it's it's the toughest job I've ever had, but it, it's just, I can't stop working, you know. I'm a workaholic in this I field. It. I get it. I mean, so the question now, okay, what do you love most about being an artist? Um, there's too much to list, but I, I'm going to start with the connection with the fans. I mean, the fee- okay. feedback from fans who are genuinely interested. I mean, that's really my drive. Um, but even without it, well, yeah, you need feedback really to be to be driven. Not everybody needs it. Um, I guess a paycheck it could be motivation enough. But for me, I need I need to feel like it's uh, like it's going somewhere. Like like it's right. it's not just turning into dollars. Um, it's a little bit of soulless work. In that regard, um, also I just I, I don't know I just I love music I live breathe breathe and consume music and I love to create so right. uh, that the, those are some of the many things that I love about it um, I love being my own boss um, kind of taking control of the yeah. reins and if I want to kind of pivot take a different direction I love that too it's always something new like. every day it's something new the gigs the live performances right um. And how, let's say, how do you handle um, all of your social media? The reason that I ask that is that, you know, back in the day, <laughs> there wasn't social media. You know, people would go into the radio stations and say, here, I have a record. Um, can you play it? And sometimes, you know, they would play it. Now, when you're creating art, you have to see, oh, will it work on this platform? Or will it work on that platform if you care about that crap? Um Oh, can they go viral on TikTok? Yeah. Can I get somebody else to to use it? Um, it's just, it's just, it is beyond crazy. It's just a whole different dynamic. And so, how do you oh, yeah. match all of that? <laughs> you don't sleep. Um, well, I do have a small team uh, that I've just had to default to, but it's a lot. It's sometimes it's more work than just me doing the stuff myself. Um, but over the years, I've just, I've just realized like it's, 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 it's the amount of work that I have to do just to maintain, um, just the the output of content and uh, to to produce high quality you know music videos and and music production. 
I, I can't constantly be dealing with dealing with the marketing and the outreach yeah. and that type of stuff. So, Amen. but it's, I, I, you know, something, so that's what I've had to do, but it, it's, it's still, it's too much. You know, I've, I, yeah. I've done a number of interviews where I've pretty much complained and fetched about how I would love to have a manager who I could trust. And I've had right. a, a few come along and I didn't feel like, like I was ready yet. Shit, I don't know what I was waiting for, but, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I get nervous about these 360 deals. So, but the idea right. is sort of giving up a portion of your, your income to somebody oh, yeah. who's a specialist in one area of expertise is very much appealing. Um, all these social media marketing agencies, they kind of piss me off because they, they really, they, uh, you got to undo the mess that they create for you. <laughs> so, yes. uh, I, and, and that's part of the reason why I do a lot of stuff myself and I micromanage, which I don't like to do, uh, mm. but I, I micromanage everybody. Like I have my own employees and I, I am, and I, t and I need to, I look over <laughs> the shoulder and I, I'm like, I need to know what you're doing. Um, mm. so that's my long winded answer. Interesting. Yeah, I don't have anybody to micro. I micromanage myself. Um, it is well. Uh, for, well may, it works for some people. Ah, it's just, you know, I'll be honest. There are days I'm like, I don't know about this music thing, but you know, music has been my saving grace, so I continue to do it. Um, but it's people. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. So, mm -hmm. what? Do, how do you go you about? Bet creating your music what is the whole structure if you have a structure of creating something you know do you is there a theme do you just wake up do you have a dream about a song you're like oh my gosh i have to do this how do you go about creating your music so i have i start with um with midis like a huge library of midis so that i can sort of build out the concept that i'm looking to produce and mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of send out okay pretty much certain lines from from different channels so for instance if it's mm -hmm. a trumpet uh bass drums whatever it is yeah I'm, I, I might connect with some artists uh if I try to keep it 100 percent in-house I'll just produce the stuff like for instance uh, ABBA I just released ABBA which is an instrumental symphony um with a uh, collaboration with Fiddlers Dream Productions my, my entertainment group Right. And that just came out. That 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 was pretty much in house, and then like featuring the violin. Um, uh, Subtle Pulse was a collaboration with a uh, very the very very talented Porter singer. She is a uh, she's a vocalist uh, out in Seattle, and so she was part and parcel to the production of that song. Okay. Um, so uh, every and that was a very different genre than ABBA. ABBA is orchestral symphony, classical type, you know, contemporary. Subtle right. Pulse is like little bit of a, an EDM, meditative, mid-energy, melodic kind of mm. kind of song with vocals. Very different. So I don't have a one-size-fits-all methodology, <laughs> uh, and I think that's because I'm not, like, tied down to one, and I kind of just right. produce a range of different genres, uh, and I try to see what sticks with my fan base because they're all kind of from different parts right. of the world and – different tastes. Yeah. I love that. See, you know, uh, when I interview a lot of people, you know, you ask them, oh, what's your genre? A lot of people don't like to say a specific genre. I don't particularly like to say a specific genre, but I've been pushed in the corner with that because I do a lot of the genres. But m right now my main focus is country and Americana. and uh, But I'm trying ah. to get people, I want to start a revolution, like try to get people to see music as art. Because music is subjective. When people go to their art gallery, they may look at something and say, oh, that's interesting. When they're criticizing music, now, they should have done this. They should have done that. Blah, blah, blah. I hate that. And what people need to understand is that also that music evolves over time. People just don't understand. Oh, yeah. There's people that are wedded. No, it's got to be like that. Like blues and jazz and country, they're like that. They're like, oh, everything, like country music, they're like, oh, everything has to rhyme. I'm like, why? Aren't you trying to tell a story? You can tell a story without rhyming. Um, well, you know, you know who's at fault for that is are the social media companies. They are forcing people to put 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 up categories so that they can right. create this hierarchy of the major labels. Are you most similar to this to Ed Sheeran right. or yeah. Yeah. Miley Cyrus? 
And it's like, yeah. well, oh, what if I don't worship them? What if I kind of, you know, don't want to be like this little guy um, who's just hoping that a major label picks me up? You know, it'd be nice, but right. maybe I'm just producing my own stuff. And that's exactly what I do. I don't fit in a category. It's really difficult because of that. I love for me that, to though. do different types of promotions. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that. Because when I was when, when I was a lot younger and wasn't really into the music business, you know, I'd listen to a song. Now I listen to lyrics more than er- anything else. And then I listen to the instrumental part after I hear the lyrics. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's really interesting. How did they do that? When I put my music together, I like to put instruments together that people just wouldn't think of. You know, just creating something unique and different. Because for me, you know, when you turn on the radio stations, it's basically the same stuff over and over and over again. And that's okay for the people that like that over and over and over and over again thing kind well, of thing. Because they don't know any different. They don't, they don't know, know any, any different better. because we've been yes, because we've they, they've thrown all this music down our throat. They won't let us know about anything else un, unless the person says, you know what, I'm just going to research the internet or the social media platforms and I'm going to find something different because I need something that's just not going to be so redundant. No, I, I, I it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. I have a quick so, question for you. Yes. Go ahead. Start uh, the interview here. Um, somebody like Bad Bunny, do you think that his music would have just naturally gone viral if he didn't have millions of dollars being pushed behind him and the major labels oh, pushing no. him? No, I, no, it wouldn't have gone viral. <laughs> so that's how I feel. I feel like a lot of the stuff that's like earworms and people people can't people are requesting they wouldn't request it over other music they just they're requesting because they've heard it all the time right exactly and exactly they know i mean it drives me up a wall it, yeah it's crazy even like with tiktok recently they just said there are there they have employees that push you know cert, certain um profiles more than others it depends on what they're on what they're doing and what they're saying and stuff like that. I mean, I could notice that too because there's some of my stuff that will just go, pew, and then there's stuff that will just be uh, very stagnant. Um, no, I, I I agree with you. It's just horrible. It's like I don't know if you heard, I can't remember this girl's name. Oh, the Cash Me Out girl. So she was this nasty little girl um, that Phil Phil Don not Phil Donahue. Oh my God. Phil Donahue. No, not Phil Donahue, because that's very old. Um, Dr. <laughs> Phil. My God, I said Phil oh, Donahue. I even am better. aging myself. Oh, my God. So Dr. Phil had this little girl. She was a nasty little girl. She became extremely popular. She started rapping. And she's a multimillionaire based on the fact that she was nasty. And I think that's truly sad. And uh, it's not because she's a great rap artist, but because she's known she talked back, she did she was disrespectful. Then she did her only only fans yeah. did all this stuff, and then now she's a multimillionaire. And it's not about the music for her. She just became a, 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 I think I don't know if it was Sony it was a record label that saw her and said, "Oh, we can cash in on this." Yeah. And this a little girl, and it's just it, I mean that kind of stuff is just it's poop. <laughs> yeah, and and while and while uh, you know the new systems that have emerged. Um, have like technology has has yeah. like opened up opportunities for smaller artists, a huge range of small artists. It's still kind of feeding into feeding feeding into the top, so that right. you know th- these executives are making the big decisions. And uh, I exactly. think it's sad. Exactly. So let me ask you about this. It's okay if we go over time, Mike. Um, what do you think of the new yeah. a- AI thing, the chat? thing you've heard of you know i year. i've dabbled in that stuff just to kind of take a look i, I don't think it's there yet you know i i mean there yeah you can you can fake it a couple times but it's it, it's just it's not it it, it it needs a lot more work i think to really fully evolve um in my opinion you know i've 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 played around and i haven't been too impressed with a, bu- a bunch of the uh the the outputs but um that's just been my experience I, I think uh, that it could be – yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. You know, if you're looking at, like, uh, AI mixing or AI mastering, you know, you can use it as an adjunct to the effort that you're putting in. But I still mm-hmm. find myself going back to um, kind of the, the bare bones, the, the, the skeletal components to, the, to, the, to my music to at least mm-hmm. satisfy my ears. Um, I don't right. know how discerning a lot of the people out, out there are. Um, 
I, I, it, it may be this inevitable thing where, you know, in order to survive in the music industry, because the amount of content you have to produce is astronomical, uh, people right. may need to depend more on AI. I don't know. Um, well, sure. I tried the um, AI. I had the app on my phone, and I asked it to create a song about loss. And uh-huh. it, it gave me a full... It gave me a full song in two minutes. Now, obviously, the thing needed to to be tweaked, but I think Uh that's god awful. I mean, because I I heard, I can't remember the the artist, but they said he used that to create one of his songs. But for me, you you're not a creative after that. If you're using AR to create music, you are not the creator. You are not the artiste for me, unless you take something, you really tweak it to death. And the AI part of it is literally non-existent. That's something totally different. I mean, I asked it to, to, to compose the, the, a track for me, um, just the chords for a song, and it did it. And for all of this, I'm, I love technology, don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of things make people lazy. It's just laziness. I mean, and, and, and what's yeah. crazy is you can ask it, I, I, and I fear for people that are in school and college, whatever, you can ask it to write an essay for you. So what's, so what's left? Yeah. You know? and, and yeah. And as it evolves, we're going to have to do less, um, which, right? is, which I think scares the crap out of a lot of people because it's like, well, all the jobs are going to be replaced. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen that way because I don't think the systems, I don't think the government would, would allow like mayhem, but they do right. say that I've been hearing pretty frequently from guy, big guys like Elon Musk, people who are pretty much running society. Right. They're, they're saying, you know, we're going to have to have be paying out a livable wage uh, as all these jobs are going to be replaced inevitably by AI. Um, and if it happens that way, um, a lot of good could come, could emerge from just having convenience uh, so that you kind of uh, create equity in society where – not not only the wealthy will have uh, access to, you know, their own servants, uh, <laughs> you know, cleaning up their house and taking care of stuff and cooking. The average right. person will also. Uh, as long as we're able to kind of manage working as a society and we're not – this this whole system of AI isn't hijacked by, you know, people in charge, which it very well could. Um, if it isn't, then I, I think, you know, society could be better off and be more peaceful because we'll see what happens. No, I guess we will. Um, I took this in a different direction. I couldn't help okay. myself. <laughs> well, I'm going to play your song, ABBA. Well, let's listen to that. All right. Thank you. 
Now that was stunning. That deserves to be in film, <laughs> television, whatever, you name it. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice of you. I was surprised I didn't give you my Atlanta song because I feel like that would have been more upbeat. You did, but I wanted to do a little something different. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I, well, I was the, the most recent release, so it made sense. I mean, it's beautiful. I, I, you, you, you are a genius. Oh, I'm touched. Genius, Thank genius, you so much. genius. Um, so I have one last question. Um, mm-hmm. the question that I have for you is music, not music. Drum roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drum roll. Um, one last question for five hundred. For five hundred. What do you wish you had known before you got into the music business? Name three things you wish oh. you had known. Oh. What a loaded <laughs> question. Oh, well, you know, i got to do it. What do I wish – what are three things I wish I had known or one? Three. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, three. Um, before I got – so, like, we're talking, like, when I was 19 – about to, well, whenever, whenever. I mean, it could be now. You could sit back and say, "Damn, I didn't know this was like this." <laughs> well, let me tell you, I, I, I don't even, I don't know if I mentioned that. I was never supposed to become a. I, the plan was was never in the books for me to be a professional musician. I had the training, a uh, lifelong training, but uh, the plan was for me to, you know, go off like, you know, work in medicine and. That's why I got all those degrees, <laughs> expensive degrees. I graduated from <laughs> NYU, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, that wasn't, yeah, like I mentioned, it sort of chose me. What's that? No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> no. Guess I'm hearing voices. <laughs> so it, it was kind of, so it sort of chose me. Like it was already paying the bills. It was already, I, w- I just kind of made the shift after I graduated. I'm like, okay, well. These are gigs are coming in. I'm just going to continue. Uh, but I wish I had known how how challenging, how many hats I would have had to that I was going to have to wear as an independent artist. Because originally, when I was just sort of, um, you know, performing, I was just doing like originally I was doing weddings, uh, oh, private yeah. events, that type of stuff, and even some concerts and booking agents. Uh, they they managed everything. I just kind of showed up and played whatever they wanted me to do. Up to play, but I wasn't self-managing. I wasn't producing my own stuff. Right. Um, so I thought, okay, well, if I'm earning a living now, it's going to be like it's going to be a walk in the park managing myself. Plus, I'll have the independence. And little did I know how difficult it was going to be. So I wish I kind of knew more about that. I wish I had also known how nasty and dirty social media is. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I hope not. I'm not discouraging people, but it's just it's such a it's really like working for a company without any sort of feedback right. um, in the sense that like you have a boss because it's like you can, right. just, they can just drop you whenever they want and you don't, you just kind of, it behooves you. It's, um, it's the responsibility is, is on your shoulders to make sure that you have access to your audience uh, through other channels like, uh, you know, uh, email or, or maybe many chat or, or just other 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 avenues other than just just right. Like, yeah. So I wish I'd know more about that. Um, I wish I had, and third, I guess I wish I had known uh, understood that being an independent artist it requires the the same amount of not more uh, larger um, knowledge base and and effort than mm. a mainstream rank and file like teaching job, which is very difficult. I, right. I did it for four years with the DOE. Uh, or nursing job or, or anything else um, that I've, mm. I've spent a significant amount of time in. So, yeah, there you go. I agree. One one of the, one thing I will add to that, I would say that I didn't know how many um, scammers there were in the music industry in the sense that oh. they, they can smell you when you just start out. They're like, oh, I can oh. make it. So I've learned to do my due diligence. I do. I research everybody that contacts me. Um, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Um, no, you can't. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, you're not trick me. I mean, they come out of the woodwork. It's almost like they smell the oh, yeah. And, you know, uh-huh. and I won't lie. 
in the beginning, I I I gave money. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I lost money because I I believed in the crap. But yeah, everybody no more. does. No more. <laughs> well, social media facilitates that kind of garbage. You know, Spotify. How much of how much of Spotify? How, like Spotify turns a blind eye to bots. Um, and they're just, it's bot central on that platform because they, because it actually helps them. It helps, right. helps attract right. Right. Uh, more listeners. Oh, this guy's got a million streams. Yeah. But how many of them are actually authentic and real? And right. <laughs> like, what's the ratio of, of streams to like, to, to playlists and shares and that kind of stuff. So right. it's a big mess. <laughs> it is. It's a huge mess. But hopefully mm-hmm. someday we shall overcome this mess. My gosh, this is whew, this industry. Right. But the thing, the best, the best part is, is that we get to do something that we love and we enjoy, and you know, it brings yeah. joy to other people. It brings joy to other people, and mm-hmm. you know, that's what I try to keep in mind. <laughs> I try to keep that in yep. mind every single day, because every single day I'm like, I don't know. It's it's weird because every day I'll say that and then I'll get a message from somebody or someone and they'll say, oh my god, I listened to this and I really loved it and I'm like, okay, oh, okay, I yeah, I'll continue this. I see what you're doing there. Um, <laughs> um, and I and I and I do enjoy the the aspect of creating music. I do like that a lot. Um, it gives me joy, mm-hmm. much joy. Um, so yeah, but that's kind of a prerequisite. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to love what you do. Amen. Amen to that. Well, and a lot of people to... don't yes. do not do what they love. Sadly. That's right. But yeah, that's what I said in the beginning is that after the pandemic, people realize, oh, my gosh, I need life is really short. I need to do something that I love. No, I and, and there's still people yeah. that you're right that don't do, you know, they're not working at the, the stuff that they love. They're miserable. <laughs> Which yeah, I, and, and I all for what? So that they can have a retirement. Exactly. You know, I, I, I mean, you don't want to live on the street, but within reason. Amen. Yeah, I, to I take a paycheck of twenty thousand less to, to, to be joyful, to wake up every day and look forward to, to the next project. Yeah. I agree one hundred. Well, Asher, thank you so much for being on chatting with Nat. Um, I love this conversation. You are a really authentic with the love. You're not afraid to say what you mean. <clears throat> I love thank that. you. And you and you create awesome music. I've got to get your stuff to my music uh, publishing manager because I mean, there's stuff. There's a place for you. There is a place for you. I want to hear your music in a documentary, a film, a commercial, a television show, something. Got to get, it's got to get done. Well, I that would mean the world to me if if you uh, could help me out because I'm always I'm always <laughs> looking for help. Yeah, that's I you know I I, I prefer something like that over uh, all the gigs that I do about 200 events a year. I'm Woo! like you know what I'd rather kind of my music be in. TV, that would be kind of more fun. <laughs> yeah, and you can make some good money too doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I will try to send her something tonight. I gotta, yeah, I gotta do that. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed it. I am going to follow you. And and if there's anything okay. I, else I can do for you, you, you can always contact me. I can try. Oh, thanks, and, and likewise. I can try. I can try. All right, everybody. This was yeah. chatting with with electric violinist and dancer Asher Lobb. He's amazing. You can find him on found.asherlobb.com, www.asherlobb.com. Facebook is Asher Lobb Music. Instagram is Asher Lobb. TikTok is at Asher Lobb. YouTube is Asher Official Music. Twitter's Asher Love, and then you can find him on Spotify, but guess what? You can also buy his music. Yeah, you remember that thing? You make a purchase, it comes to <laughs> you, rather than streaming it. I know streaming is easy, but, you know, that half a cent doesn't pay the bills. So do the thing, and if you don't remember that, just click on Google. I'm getting a t-shirt that says just Google me, because we can't remember every platform that we are on, because social media is just all over the place. 
All right, everybody. Uh-huh. Until next time. Thank you so much, Asher. Thanks for having me, Natalie. What a pleasure. All right. Until next time on Chatting with Nat. <laughs> With Nat is a podcast for independent artists seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower artists. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Love your voice.